introduction. It's great to be here. I taught all day uh, in Newport High School, and the story behind the story of me is the beach. Um, it's my muse. It's the place where I ride. I was down there about 5:10 this morning. I go there every morning, rain or shine. I live within about 800 feet from the beach, and that's where I go, where I compose virtually uh, the first draft of everything I write. And it imbues virtually everything I've written, and it's probably the reason why I put out Spittle of the Spirit, uh, some of my other books. Uh, finding that as a native Oregonian, as a kid, going down to the beach and recognizing the adult and how we live differently uh, than the rest of the states is probably the story behind my story. And it really begins here. I'm an English teacher, but I'm going to give you a history lesson. Right? <laughs> and um, this is a photograph of the late Governor Oswald West. Okay, 1912. He's right. This is—he's uh, a one-termer. This is right before the beginning of the 1913 legislative session. So he rides his horse. He had a little house in uh, Cannon Beach, and he rode his horse uh, over a mail trail. There's no 101 then. Uh, over um, Mount Neocani and Arch Cape and then the Halen. And then he later said that inspired him to do something. So I'm going to read a real short piece. Uh, this new book is, I've been um, the editor of, of uh, Citadel of the Spirit, which was about 200,000 words and about you know, 120 different essays and excerpts. And the, and the book before that was a anthology commemorating the Portland Trailblazers 1976-77 championship. Uh, team among the famous Bill Walton and Maurice Lucas. So I was being an editor and a caretaker, uh, to use Tim's phrase, which is a good one, for a long time. So this is my first book, and the Vortex book before that was a documentary history, primarily oral history. So this is the first time since 2003 where it's just really my writing. And so I was determined to let myself off leash in this book, and I did that. So um, it's a series of short essays that were composed for an open mic. It's called Cafe, uh, it was the Cafe in Newport, and they've been there, Cafe Mundo, for the centerpiece of bohemian and literary and musical life in Newport. A wonderful place. It's only sustainable building, right in the heart of Nine Beach. And they had this great open mic, and I would compose an original piece uh, for a year. I went there almost 50 straight weeks. And I started reading them after I collected them, and I thought, well, maybe I have a little book here. So that's what this is. It's a collection of open mic pieces. They're very conversational about my move to Newport, which happened about a year and a half ago. But this essay is called 66 Words. It's about Oswald West. Here came the sun this week, and it officially ended a long, cold, and lonely winter. Did you see all those pale and arrested Oregonians storm the beach? It was like the invasion of Normandy in reverse. <laughs> wave after wave of human and canine troops threw themselves into the surf of wild beaver state abandoned. God, it was beautiful and uniquely Oregon, and nobody paid a cent while doing it. And they never will as long as Oregon remains Oregon, which of course some people don't want, including most prominently a certain talk show host who wants Oregon to become Houston and claims that if Jesus were alive today and walking the earth, he would order his apostles to carry firearms. <laughs> <laughs> what a glorious sight to behold. All those wetsuits, 40 ounces, families, boogie boarders, senior citizens, transgenders, all doing their respective things on the sand, right out in the open without fences, cabanas, hot dog stands, espresso carts, and security guards wearing headsets, telling anyone how much time they had left before they had to pay for extra time. This is Oregon. We demand the right to enjoy our publicly owned beaches like Texans demand the right to inflict capital punishment. <laughs> Call it what it was and what it will be, Operation Great Birthright, as in the master plan executed by perhaps the most important Oregonian of all time, former Governor Oswald West. In 1912, West rode his horse from Cannon Beach over Arch Cape and Neocani Mountain and into Nehama. He later, he later said the ride inspired him. Quote, so I came up with a bright idea. This was very much of a surprise, for I have enjoyed a few such in a lifetime. I drafted a simple, short bill. The bill was 66 words long, and it read, the shore of the Pacific Ocean between ordinary high tide and extreme low tide, from the Columbia River on the north to the Oregon and California state line in the south, 
accepting such portion or portions of such shore as may have heretofore been disposed of by the state, is hereby declared a public highway and shall forever remain open as such to the public. With this law, Oswald West changed Oregon forever in all of our lives. He created a unique relationship between a state citizenry and a specific natural resource unlike any other in the country. He created a special place where Jesus walks on sand and never packs a piece. <laughs> and I get all my ideas there. And you think about what a master stroke that was. It didn't cost the taxpayer a cent. Uh, the wet sands area was being used at that time as a public highway. Um, in the ferry system because there was no north-south highway. That comes in the 30s. So you realize if he hadn't got the wet sands area, we wouldn't recognize the coast. Then the famous battle for the dry sands area comes in 1967 with Bob Straub, with Tom McCall, with Matt Kramer to save the dry sands portion where most people recreate. So there's really two stories of the beach bill with Oswald West and then with Tom McCall and the, the beach bill. And um, I've written extensively about both of those, but particularly the, the 1967 beach bill, which was just an epic political battle to, to save Oregon's soul for those dry sands area. And if it had not passed, it was very close to not being passed, if you were looked into the story, well, you wouldn't recognize the coast today. Everybody would have extended, private property owners would have extended all the way to the wet sands area, riprap, boardwalk, fences, everything. So it was that close, but we did it differently. And I would argue I would never become a writer without having a beach. I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for a piece of legislation, which is something I'm exploring as a writer myself. How do pieces of legislation change people? And you don't even really know it. And so I grew up in Oregon City, and those pieces of legislation, like the Beach Bill from 67, the Bicycle Bill, um, Oregon's wanted land use planning system. Um, all these things, who did they turn us into? Or me at, at age 45, and I look at my students, and we talk, I mean, I get to death into that. <laughs> um, you know, what are these laws that have imbued me to teach you that you grew up with these things? So it's a very interesting thing, and we do read Kim Keeson too. Um, 